So we're on location at Brock University in the lab for Brock TV with uh, sports and news producer Adam Marshall, who was at the student council meeting yesterday. Uh, Adam is going to provide us a little bit of a uh, correspondence with what took place at council. Um, so first of all, what did the agenda say uh, on the website prior to uh, the meeting? Uh, actually, the agenda for this meeting wasn't posted on the BUSU website. Um, that actually pre uh, presented a bit of a problem for me because uh, I wasn't able to stay for the whole meeting. Uh, and the reason was I expected it to be short. I didn't know the agenda. I didn't know that there was multiple referendums going to be on this agenda. So had I seen that ahead of time, I would have been able to uh, make different arrangements to stay. Um, so I was there for about the first two hours. And then... Um, the two hours after that, I have a video, um, which I've reviewed some of, but haven't, haven't, haven't gone through all of it yet. So what uh, ended up being on the agenda? Uh, there was a lot of things. Um, separate from referendums, there was one club funding request from uh, Brock SOS, which actually um, became a pretty interesting discussion. Um, Referendum-wise, the Fed Up uh, Affordable Food Program was scrapped. Uh, it was supposed. It was sent to referendum by Busak at their previous meeting, uh, and I guess what happened, um, or what's happened since that last meeting, was uh, M uh, from Oper and from the Affordable Food Project received an email from Brock University administration saying um, Brock University is seeking legal advice regarding uh, Busu's ability to collect third-party ancillary fees. Uh, and this referendum cannot happen in the meantime. So I've never heard of that happening before. Um, that was something that was also sent to, I'm, I think the way this worked was it was that, that correspondence would have been sent to Josh Stone as the Speaker of Council. He brought that to Council and said the university says this, but Council did still discuss it and did still vote on it. So um, I have some of that on video. That's what I'm looking forward to reviewing today. Um, and the discussion eventually led to a vote in favor of removing the referendum. So, Bruce But this was a referendum that was created by a student-led petition that had received quorum. There were it was. at least 500 signatures as submitted. Yeah. How does council have the power to suspend a student-led petition referendum? Well, they... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's kind of a new situation, and I don't know that they... I do believe they have the power to retract a referendum if they feel that something's wrong, that it's not going to be a fair referendum if somebody's thrown off the, you know, the bias of the platform or whatever. I do believe they have the ability to stop a referendum, but this shouldn't be a reason that they do it. Um, the, the what are the councilor, What were the discussions in council centering around in terms of the pros and cons of? proceeding with a referendum that the administration has already expressed its difficulty with? Well, I saw a bit of the discussion earlier on in the night. Um, M brought forward a second question um, saying, if you deny this referendum from going, could you please ask an opinion question of the student body? Uh, so that was an alternate referendum idea. Um, as for the discussion that they had leading up to the decision to retract it, I have to watch that still, to be honest. So uh, we can do that right now if you want. Um, but I imagine the discussion at the BUSU level, at least at the BUSU exec level, is, you know, what, what is Brock University saying is going to happen if BUSU were to go ahead and run the referendum anyway? Which they totally could have. BUSAC could have upheld the decision to re push it to referendum. It's not really BUSAC's problem that the university itself doesn't want to do this. So what I expected to happen was for BUSAC to still send it to referendum run the referendum, hopefully it passes, because it's a great project. Let's say that happens, then when it comes time to collect money, that would be when the university would say, hey, we're putting kibosh in this, or we're not, not cutting you your check. That would have been really interesting, but the university has intervened even earlier in the process, at a point where, personally, I didn't even know the university could intervene, because it hasn't even gone to referendum yet, and administration's already put a stop to a student-led initiative, which is concerning. Uh, we've been reporting on this. This was we, I uh, talked about this on air last week. Uh, at that time, it was rumors. It was merely rumored that the administration was um, not comfortable with fed up. But now it is confirmed uh, at council. 
what are the what are the uh, other um, well let's talk about two things when you say that the administration sent an email saying that uh, third party ancillary fees are in question uh, does that undermine Oberg, Brock Press, and uh, uh, you know a future future viability of Brock Radio? Uh, are all third party ancillary fees on the line now, or is that reading into that email too much? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to say. Like the the exact quote that I have here, M has published this quote from the email he received. Brock University is currently seeking legal advice around the liability and legality for the collection of third party ancillary fees. And as such, a referendum cannot be held at this time until a decision has been made. So, they're looking into the li liability and legality for the collection of third-party fees. Whether that applies to fees that are already in place is really difficult to say. Um, and it's also difficult to say whether if M suddenly decided to make the Affordable Food Project a division of BUSU rather than a separate corporation, would the university still stomp it out? That would be a really interesting thing for, for me to want to see what happens. Is, is the central issue being framed as to uh, this ancillary, the third party ancillary fee issue, or is it a uh, contractual problem with Sodexo that, uh, that fed up? I mean, is there anything in the public record that discusses Sodexo in this discussion? Well, I don't know if there's, if Sod how involved Sodexo was in the discussion, but I. But what you could say is that Brock has never mentioned having any issue with third-party ancillary fees until the Fed Up project came about. So I wouldn't think that the university would have any intention of preventing an organization like OPER or CFPU or the Brock Press from continuing to collect their fee. However, I don't see how they can draw a line that would stop the Affordable Food Project but wouldn't also have negative consequences for every other third party organization at campus on campus so this sounds like really big news it is it's a huge deal um i haven't been able to find evidence of this kind of thing happening anywhere else um not in ontario um at least so far in my research i don't know about yours but uh it's a it's a very very complex situation and it's scary if the university is considering scrapping third-party fees altogether just to prevent one particular one from existing, um, especially when there's an organization like Sodexo, a massive organization, obviously a massive amount of money involved in their contract with Brock University, um, a contract which is now available online, but it's redacted heavily. Um, yeah. yeah, it's available at feedbrock.org. Um the Fed Up Project had a freedom of information request mm -hmm. uh, to release that document, which was uh, heavily redacted. Yeah. Uh, it's the Brock University and Sodexo uh, service contract, which was a 10-year contract, renewed only last year. Um, that is something that we've been paying attention to, at least as brockbug.com has been interested in it and doing background research. We haven't had yet had a chance to uh, really dig into uh, exploring the issue, but now it has been pushed into the forefront uh, thanks to the work of of M and Oberg, as well as uh, at, at least 15 or 20 uh, core group of students who uh, are, I mean, I've seen at council, uh, highly supportive. Yeah, and last night, again, um, huge support for M. Um, several volunteers from the Affordable Food Project showed up and stayed for a very, very long meeting, again, um, to demonstrate that students do care about the issue. And when they presented that meeting, uh, when they presented the student-led referendum petition, uh, at the December 3rd meeting, that wasn't approved until after midnight because more than an hour and a half was spent interrogating um, M. Hepler about Fed Up. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, BUSU President Cooper Millard issued a constitutional challenge uh, regarding student led petitions and the definition of must approve, uh, which then resulted in an interesting ruling being made at the following meeting. Um, do you have any more information about uh, that issue? Um, Cooper's constitutional challenge um, didn't come up again last night, but when M was presenting his proposed uh, opinion question, there was a lot of harsh questions asked, a lot of, uh, not harsh questions, and not, not pointed at M, 
but very um, somewhat accusatory. Um, they were very hesitant of the idea of potentially running the two questions at the same time. Because at that point in the meeting, the actual fed up referendum hadn't been canceled yet officially, it was still on. And M was talking about also asking this opinion question. And a bunch of counselors, including um, the president, Mr. Millard, uh, jumped on that right away when obviously everyone in the room knew that the other one wasn't going to go. Like they weren't designed to both go at the same time. M was just bringing that forward as a last resort. Really, I, I felt, um, because if you can't run the referendum to get the affordable food project right now, I think, I think it's a great idea. The next best thing would be to get a referendum that con concretely shows evidence that students want change and want some sort of project. Like, whether it's the affordable food project or whether it's Busu making changes or Saxo and Brock making changes. Um, I think that question um, would be the next best thing for, for him, at least, for his organization at this point. I'm gonna grab that well, tell us your Twitter handle and um, and how we can follow the story. You uh, live tweeted during council yesterday, so a lot of the insights that the public is gleaning uh, first gleaned it from your uh, Twitter. So yes. where can we find you on Twitter? I'm at Adam Marshall four zero nine. Um, you can follow me there. I do tweet whenever I'm at a boost meeting, um, and it's also where I share my stories first. It usually gets shared there before anywhere else. Um, and you can also follow at Brock TV for our news segments. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you.